talking about healthy relationship with nightlife it's coming up to new year's eve new year's day i know a lot of you are probably thinking where to go i'm not too sure where i should be at, especially if you're in london and it's difficult even if you are in a city outside of london doesn't matter anywhere in the world i'm sure new year's eve and new year's day are always a horrible time to go out so is you know halloween and all these other big events that should be pretty decent but usually end up being the, the worst and i think i really I only realized this when I was promoting. I think for the longest time, if you're just a punter, you just assume, or not, maybe you're a punter. Maybe if you're somebody that doesn't go to these, you know, bait nights too often and you mostly do your clubbing or you're going out sometimes between the days of like Tuesday and Thursday, which a lot of smart people do, you just bang it out in a weekend and you spend the entire weekend just chilling, relaxing, doing cultural stuff and whatnot, getting your mind right, working on other bits and bobs or whatever. Maybe you're going out to eat in nice restaurants. But a lot of people who have advanced the levels of nightlife thing have basically decided that Thursdays and sometimes the Tuesday, sorry, to Thursdays or Tuesdays to Fridays are usually the best times to go, which, you know, rain kind of clocks back to that. I love my Conan song going up on a Tuesday, which makes a lot of sense now, you know, the older that I've got. But one thing you realize when you start cup promoting is that those days that should be big money earners usually aren't because there's so many different options out there people can choose. Halloween and New Year's Eve, New Year's Day being a big example. But also, if you actually smash it and you get it right, you can make a killing. It goes two ways. It's really difficult to kind of get your head around it, but it can go two ways very, very, very quickly. So it's hard to kind of pass which is the best thing to do. For me, in previous years when I have been, you know, willing to go out and party, the ones that have been the best have been the occasions where I've been able to go to a house party somewhere where I think one year I went to this kind of person's house and they cooked an amazing dinner. And then we kind of welcomed in a new year with drinks and watching the fireworks and whatnot from this person's balcony. That was absolutely amazing. Um, we did another thing where you saw fireworks on this person's rooftop, which is pretty sick. And all this was amazing. And that kind of revolved more so around like being around a small group of friends in someone's home, loads of food, loads of drink, but it wasn't really like a boom, 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 hands in the air party sort of vibe. I can't remember the last time I had a good New Year's Eve in terms of a rave. It's been a long time, probably because I stopped going for a while, but the last time I could think of an actual party that was sick New Year's Eve might be when one of my friends prior like a long time it must have been at 2017 2016 put on an amazing warehouse event somewhere in like london bridge they hired this really cool location like underneath some in some arches under a bridge somewhere that was cool you had to knock on a door to get in crawl through this little door you have to you know you had to be invited and whatnot friends of friends type of vibe they had a full setup in there full light show smoke machine all friends playing and whatnot and it wasn't you know hard techno or anything it was just like you know fun new year's eve type music lots of pop records lots of r&b lots of disco lots of house lots of jungle lots of ukg all that good stuff was playing and it was a really really fun time and i think if i'm not mistaken it was also byob which is crazy to think right imagine doing something like that nowadays but that was really really fun i had a good time going to that one but apart from that i kind of put them to bed but this year with you know me not going to Berlin this time around and just kind of saving that experience for maybe later in the new year this event from fold for unfold new year's day is seeming like a pretty good option i'm still on the fence like i said i'm not the biggest fan of going out new year's eve new year's day i'm sure most of you adults out there are the same i think if you're a child it's probably a good excuse to go out because there might be the only one time where you're legitimately allowed to go outside and you don't get your parents have been abusing and for them you know blowing up your phone line checking where you're at they kind of give you a bit more room wiggle room to kind of enjoy yourself and have a good time if you get the excuses in earlier and you stay you say you're staying at a certain person's house who they like that might actually help in terms of your you know amount of time you like to stay out that can obviously go a long way but if you're an adult you know it's hellhole to be out there but considering how great unfold is or how highly regarded it is because again i still haven't been to one yet despite me going to the very first flipping fold party and going to fold essentially for every month you know for most of the year i still haven't been to one unfold yet basically because you know I have a IRL life that I have to kind of keep in somewhat balance. And usually when it comes to Sunday, I'm already wrecked on the Friday and Saturday that I've been out. But from what I've heard, Unfold's amazing. And Unfold, basically the premise around it is that it's their kind of friends and family night, it's kind of an unofficial resident night. Even though they have a resident night already, that's called Resistance that I've been to. I think I went to two of them. I think, and I think there's, I think they might be on the fourth or the fifth, not too sure, but they've got residence night called resistance, but they've also got unfold, which is kind of like an unofficial friends and family residence night, but it also gives them a good option because sometimes 
big DJs will come and play in London throughout the weekend, but they won't leave maybe until the Monday because sometimes the flights out on the Sunday are really expensive. I know this because I'm always, you know, I'm one of those psychos that checks, you know, a certain DJs like RA sort of like events listings and stuff and see where they're at and then kind of Googles or goes to Instagrams and find out the, you know, the club where it's at, what the vibe is like. I'm one of those kind of weirdos. So I know a lot of people you know, that playing these type of places that come to London, especially wouldn't usually leave on a Monday or a Tuesday. So if you've got good connections with them or you know them personally, or they're just, you know, a fan of the club in general, because I feel like a lot of DJs are big fans of Fold and what they've done in kind of the space and the crowd that it attracts because it's maybe the only club we've got in London outside of the promoters who put on great nights. It's the only probably base um, where you actually see club kids, right? Which which is great to see. And people will legitimately go out, dress up and stuff, make an effort to go and dance and sweat their faces off. And it's kind of a good vibe to kind of be around or whatnot, especially a lot of that younger energy and whatnot. So a lot of those bigger DJs who come play on the weekend will sometimes play at Unfold, but it will all be unannounced because they don't reveal the lineup, which is really cool. So you usually go on a Sunday, it's usually 12 to 12, so you've got enough time to get the last train home, especially I think the Jubilee line still runs at that time, if I'm not mistaken. You maybe can, you know, grab it if you decide to leave at like 11.30. But in general, it's a good time to kind of go. And obviously Sundays as well, it's not going to be the baitest time for people to go and party, so you'll probably avoid all the... Lager outs and the weirdos. I don't know. Maybe two different knows. Maybe there are, might be some lager outs and weirdos left around. Left who might go, but for the most part, it seems like a, they usually attract a good crowd, and it's kind of friends and family and some unannounced special guests. So I can only imagine the amount of good people who might end up passing through. The people who played at New Year's Eve and maybe are leaving on a Monday and they want to play quickly, get your set in throughout the afternoon or early evening, and then head back to your hotel and you know jump on the first flight back out there on a Monday. So this is a listing courtesy of Instagram, courtesy of Fold's Instagram. It says, Unfold New Year's Day 2424. What a year, 23 Sundays we have spent together. We danced, we cried, we learned, we loved, but most importantly, we grew. We grew into a community that openly manifests queer-centered dance floors where all can be free to explore their sexuality and gender and be celebrated whilst doing so. Now our 24th dance will be for 20, will last for 24 hours. As always, the lineup is unannounced and tickets are only available on the door. 20 for 20 pounds which is an absolute bargain if you think about it because most new year's days or new year's eve events are going to be through the roof in terms of what they're going to be pricing it as i know most places i'm a, i'm going to assume fair to say are going to price anywhere between like 30 pounds to 70 maybe to 100 pounds depending on where you're at and it's some places I know from, you know, being friends with a lot of flipping security guards, having gone out for so many years, you sometimes get familiar with a lot of these people and they maybe, you know, are cool enough to kind of, you know, give you the odd chat here and there on the queue. And they'd always say like, you know, New Year's Day and New Year's Eve would be a great time to make some extra money on the side because people are so desperate to come in. They might want to give you a little tip to get them bounce up in front of the queue, which sometimes some scumbaggy bouncers will take your money and still not let you in, which is cruel. But for the most part, you can make a lot of extra change if you are working on the door, especially, you know, outside of people giving you tips just the time you're working was absolutely crazy so that's obviously can be great but like i said before 20 quid for a new year's day party in a venue that you know most likely is going to be is, is probably one of our best in london they're going to have a pretty decent lineup even if it's just only friends and family and it's going to be a vibe like that's that's a pretty good deal entrance is not guaranteed which i like and it's at the discretion of our fold entrance team unfolds entrance team so this is going to be door picking which is going to be essential because it's new year's day um, you know, quite slash New Year's Eve or before that New Year's Eve, it's going to be essential that they have absolute, the right person on the door. I can imagine a whole group of man, there's people rolling through because they remembered, oh yeah, this place fold is open. And because there's going to be so many people out in London just in Ubers trying to find the next motive. That's usually the plan. I know I've done it before in my past where I've kind of been in an Uber, jumping around from place to place, trying to make sure my Wi Fi is connected. I've got 3G so I can find the next rave to kind of bounce to. But if they'd store select and whatnot, it should be a pretty decent vibe. So I'm actually, I'm thinking of going if I'm able to kind of wake up in time. As always, the lineup is on and now. Da -da -da. Please ensure you bring physical ID and as always, dress to sweat. So this legitimately could be one of the ones I end up going to, but I'm still on the fence as to what I may do. Most likely on New Year's Eve, I'll probably end up going somewhere for dinner and having some drinks or whatnot and welcoming the New Year that way. But if I do end up going out on New Year's Day, it's probably going to be to unfold. So if you are looking for a place to go out in London, I probably would recommend that. If you are looking, if you are looking, if you're not, then obviously don't care, don't care, don't care.